Welcome to part two of our Cadillac XLR review. In part one, we featured a historiography of Cadillac as well as commenced the review in earnest. Feel free to tune into that to get started from the beginning or join us now. Either way, janky do thanky. We did put the top down in this car briefly just so we could show it on video. Now this is an old car, it's a 2004, and it is a used car. It only has, what, 40,000 40, miles on it? But like many cars that 41, were... For, for almost 42. Almost 42,000. Like many cars that were high-end luxury cars, this is not a cheap uh, car to maintain. Obviously the North Star, now by 2004, a lot of those head gasket issues had been resolved, but um, just parts on this car are ridiculous. The car wizard just bought one of these in a lovely shade of blue. So this is kind of a hot car right now. Um, and he was saying, you know, front headlights are like, what, $1,600, $2,000 a pair. They're over a couple thousand dollars would be reasonable. And the tail lights the same. Yep. So yep. if you want to replace anything, like it has this beautiful silver and, you know, usually plastic engine covers. We can all joke about how you can't see the engines anymore and blah, blah, blah. But this one looks fantastic. If you look at some of these old New York Central Art Deco locomotives from the 30s and 40s, it has that look to it. It has that 1920s New York City, bright city lights look to it. It really just um, is a statement car and going down the road, you know, you feel like you're driving in something really special and really, really cool. The interior, very comfortable. I'm not sure if these are repurposed C6 Corvette seats. We got seats. cooled seats too. Oh, we got cooled seats. We got heated and Heated cooled. and cooled seats. So the luxury the component is that, there. Yeah. Ventilated seats. These look a lot like they were reupholstered C6 seats, but I've always heard that the C6 seats are terrible. And actually this feels like a really nicely supported seat. It is. It's yeah. firm, but it's uh, very comfortable. And I really very think you could uh you know soak up a lot of miles in this car as i've said now the window elbow test not great as is in a lot of modern cars my elbow is letting uh, riding a little bit high up here but it is doable i will say if you wanted to drop the top on this and cruise around with your elbow uh up on the side of the door panel you could do it the steering is nice obviously power assisted but it does still have some heft and some weight to it and i like that we haven't really thrown it around corners. Luckily, the day turned out to be really nice, but it was a little bit wet earlier, and uh, I'm not about to crash uh, Scott's XLR. So forgive me if we don't do a, you know, a skid pad test to see how much grip this thing pulls. Tires are the same front and rear, which is another big difference from the Corvette, because those, since like we're going back to the C4, have always been staggered. You have wider tires in the rear. This has, I believe, 235s front and rear. So that's pretty cool because buying tires for it probably is not going to be as expensive or hard to find as, say, a Corvette. So that's actually kind of a, a hidden bargain. And this is at the day, uh, at the end of the day, a GM product. So a lot of the things that, oh, I can feel those cooled seats now. Wow, that feels excellent. Oh, yeah. Give them a little honk there. Um, horn works. Nice action to it. The other thing about this car, obviously, it is a convertible. Um, and we have this power retractable top that we were talking about earlier. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, it's like those old um, the Lincoln Continentals. It's a tour de force in uh, technological achievement. However, you know, just like a German car or something like that, the more complex it is, the easier it's going to be to break, and the harder it is it's going to be to repair. I can't imagine what doing the the you know convertible top on one of these co uh, costs, but it is quite fun to watch it go down and up and quite impressive. Um, you can't do it while it's rolling, right? A lot of the no. cars, yeah, you has to be completely stopped be to do part, it. Yep. So, you know, it's almost like a target top where you're either gonna drive with it up or drive it down. You're not gonna like be changing it a lot. Um, but I think another really rare thing about this car, it looks equally as good as a convertible or a coupe. And that's one I really agree. appealing thing. Scott really likes coupes. He's not a huge ragtop fan. And you know, with the Porsche 911, a lot of those cars, even the Corvettes, I would argue, it's really nice to have a convertible, but the coupes just look so much better. And in this car, you're really not making that compromise at all because it looks so good with the top up um, that you would never even mistake it for a convertible. You'd think it's just a coupe. And yet you can take it down and it's completely seamless in the back. Looks excellent as a convertible as well. And I will say, you know, there are a couple giveaways that it's a retractable hardtop, but I think even in that design, they managed to integrate it so it actually helps with your design. The, the 
top of the roof almost sits a little bit lower than the haunches on the side. So again, you, that kind of dives in there and just gives it that extra little bit of character and bit of profile. And I think it just looks phenomenal. The rear three quarters look perfect, perfectly angled as they dive into the rear uh, fenders, which meet the taillights. And you see the taillights dive into the fenders. The way the lights, you can see possibly on this camera that the top of the light is so integrated into the front fender that you don't even realize it's there because it's a perfect flat line. And all of a sudden you look down and there's a light just sitting on the top of the hood. It's phenomenal. And then of course, obviously it's at this right angle and dives into the front. The headlights are a little bit burned on the blinker signal. That's another one of the funny quirks of these cars. They still work, but um, you know, you have that sort of burning going on. I'm not sure what that is, just another wonderful Cadillac XLR quirk. And this is a very quirky car. Of course, we mentioned the Bulgari uh, screen. Your key fob is all actually uh, Bulgari as well. And that kind of reminds, reminds me of like the Cadillac Elante, which was styled by Pininfarina. And I believe the interior may have been even styled by another sort of high-end design firm. So there's a little bit of um, heritage in that. Uh, there's a little bit of continuity in the Cadillac brand in doing that. Some, some quirky things about this car, and that's what I keep coming back to. It's a really, really quirky car. And maybe that kind of does prove the Corvette going to college thing, because sometimes when you get a proper education, um, you know, there's some pitfalls in intellectualism. It's, you know, sometimes you can talk yourself in circles and, uh, you know, miss the overarching point of something. So perhaps this car is a little overeducated, um, but in the end, it makes for a very um, nuanced and uh, intellectual experience because you have these funny quirks about it. Instead of just having, so with the new uh, wheels on this car, you don't have the tire pressure sensor monitors. I never get the acronym right. TPSM, T TM, T TMSP, TPMS. Um, so you do have your uh, giant exclamation point as you do with all cars when you put snow tires on them in the winter or something like that. But in addition to that, Cadillac will also tell you not only that your, uh, your tire pressure is low, but it actually says your tires are flat. <laughs> and, they're, and because they are flat, their advice is to not go above 55 miles per hour and that your handling will be reduced. Which I think is hilarious because they're not like, hey buddy, your tires are flat. They're like, hey buddy, <laughs> your tires are flat. Just don't go over 55 and watch it on the corners which is just tremendous. So another one of those great quirks. I do love like a digital readout um, where it's not quite, uh, you know, I call it like me medium digital where it's, uh, you know, it's digital, it's not analog, but it's in this sort of like subway ticker font, which I really, really like. The infotainment again, I'm not even sure. It's just a giant digital Cadillac logo. It kind of looks like a desktop background on Windows 95. <laughs> like the, the resolution of it is very, very funny. I'll have to get a B-roll shot of that later. Um, so, you know, in that respect, it shows its age. But I think the longer that these things go, you know, you look at like a, a digital gauge cluster on a C4 Corvette. So in the 80s, it looked very modern. By the 90s, it looked horribly outdated. And now in the 2000s, it's actually quite charming. So I'm sure uh, as time goes on, this will only get more and more charming. And as I've said, I liken it to like Windows 95, where it just has this like very, very funny graphic interface that to the right person is actually quite nostalgic. So I really, really appreciate that. I've always loved a tan interior on an XLR, but I will say this black fits the car perfectly, especially with the silver exterior. And um, for being a black interior, sometimes they can look a little cheap, but I think this is very, very nice. Even your side panels here with these um, tri-stitching here, it's very, very padded. You get the sense that the whole thing is very, very solid. For a 2004, you know, for an old car, this, this feels very, very well put together. There's not any creaks or rattling going on. No. Um, no your dash is this wonderful sort of like marbleized leather that's very, very nice. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of reviews of uh, very modern German cars, which is ironic because usually the Germans and the Europeans always do interiors better, but Audi specifically is making, and even like Lamborghini, uh, a lot of like plastic pieces on their interiors now. So for a 2004 GM product, this is like, you know, quite uh, substantial and quite advanced. It's a really, really nice place to be. Um, and it does not disappoint, um, even with your <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> well, maybe it's Windows 98, you know, okay. maybe it's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, whatever, you know. <laughs> right, it right. It works. I mean, it, it, actually, the stereo system is pretty good. Yeah, we have a... Turn that on. Oh,
can't do it for too long because of copyright issues there. But it is, yeah, it's a Bose sound system and you have these giant speakers on your door panels right it, here. It, it does sound pretty good. It's a pretty good sound system. I can't get over the giant size of this pillar right here. And there's, yeah. there's is there an yeah, airbag in here? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm gonna say no. <laughs> it's just a giant wedge. But you're, again, like I said, your visibility is very good. And you are riding low, but you're not riding that low. No. no. That actually feels like a pretty normal height. And again, yeah. for, you know, like people of all ages, or if you just don't want to have to cram yourself into a car, if you're going to be cruising along the highway for long stretches, very, very comfortable. Your rear visibility is excellent. Even your rear three quarter visibility is not bad. Not bad, yeah. Which coming from Cadillac, you know, with a CTS uh, coupe and with a super high uh, rear window line there, Really not bad at all. Very, very comfortable car to be in. And um, I could see driving this for long miles. I actually don't know what the trunk space is like. Obviously not very, great. Not, not great. great. And not a lot of space in here. You have a couple of little panels in here. This one has a wonderful little dainty push out button that you have to push out and then twist before you lower it. So just uh, little things like that help with the, the essence of the vehicle, the je ne sais quoi. So you can put your CDs back there because you do have a wonderful CD player Six in here. CD changer, yeah. Six CD changer. There you go. So maybe we'll give it one more pull here. Well, let's, we're going to oh. turn around up here. Okay. So we can do another pull. Good brakes too. Good brakes. Good <laughs> brakes too. And the brakes do feel perfectly adequate. Uh, Four-wheel disc brakes, obviously, and in the caliper, uh, you have your XLR logo. And that's another great thing about the flagship car. You know, we were having this discussion earlier. Performance cars seem like they are high-end cars seem like they go in one of two directions. They either want to be super subtle and let you know maybe in one little place or nowhere at all. So if it's like sort of like, if you know, you know, um, and they're trying to, you know, let the performance of the vehicle do the talking. On the flip side of things, you have the cars that are a flagship car, they're a halo car, and they're going to let you know and everyone else know as many times as possible what you are driving. So let's see if we can count all the Cadillac XLR badges here. They're absolutely everywhere. They're on, first of all, your dashboard there, which is a beautiful place to put a logo. They're on your floor mat. They're on your uh, door jam. And we'll get a test of the brakes here. I guess we'll do a quick handling test, shall we? Just turn, actually turn around just do it. Oh. Well, the GPS has led me astray, ladies and gentlemen. It miss, does have actually GPS on it. Does it? Yes. Wow. Factory nav. This is actually great because we'll, we'll, I always like to, one of the things I like to do in cars is um, test out the turning circle or the turning radius as us Americans call it. Wow. Not great. <laughs> is it not great? Not great. Although, to be fair, my 2015 Toyota Prius V is also terrible. You know, any car with a really long wheelbase is not going to have a great turning circle. Or turning radius, as I mentioned, we Americans say. Actually, once, you're, once you got them all the way tilted, it's really not bad at all. Looking at this neon green heads-up display, that sort of reminds me of the Matrix. Of course, the Matrix featured the Cadillac CTS, and um, that really, you know, broke everything loose with Cadillac. Turn right. Oh yeah, we're going back. Beans. Okay, we're giving the beans up here. Bufferting, bufferting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll give her one more pull here, and then we'll wrap up. Ooh, got a little bit of tire squeal there, I think. Climbing up a hill. Oh. Boy, it just makes all the right noises. That exhaust sound, sound good, exhaust man. sounds perfectly judged. You know, it's like throaty. And yet you're in this beautiful, elegant luxury cruiser. It's, you know, I, it seems like these did actually sell quite well. I don't know how many were sold, but you're starting to see a lot of them hit the secondhand market, which means there were a decent amount of them out there. Um, and a lot of them are relatively low miles and well taken care of because they were an expensive car when new. You know, so many of these cheap sports cars, unfortunately, like my Fiat X19, were just bought and then neglected and abused. Whereas a car like this, a lot of times it was taken care of properly and right. properly maintained. And yet 
because it was so expensive, it depreciated um, and there's a niche market for it. So it's actually a really good um, secondhand buy because you know these cost well less than 50% of their original MSRP in a lot of cases. And um, if you can get one with low miles, yeah, you're gonna have to spend some money to maintain it. You wanna be really careful that you don't crack any of the headlights. Um, but that being said, because you're getting in it so cheap for what it is, it's still a really good value. Correct. So as usual here on Janky AF, we're meandering and I've lost my train of thought. I forgot what we were talking about when we were turning so, around. One thing I want to I want to point out is yeah. this has uh, radar cruise control. So if you if you if you oh. engage for 2004. Yeah. By the way. So if you can uh, if you push the button on there. So now watch this. What, look at your heads up. Yeah. Oh, I see. Set speed, follow distance. Oh my yeah. God. But it's like kind of beyond its time, but it's behind its time at the same time. You know. You know. Yeah. It's, it's like weird. a it's like a jankier it's got version. Cool seats. Right. Cool seats. Didn't have no, cooled seats, I feel like, didn't really come into popularity in, you know, especially non-super luxury cars till very recently. Right. Um, your heads-up display and your radar cruise control, that is like a, a very new thing. For you 2004. Know, and yeah, and relatively, that's a still, still a modern thing to be able to not only set your cruise control, but then have it follow a car and be able to custom set the distance behind that car, even with a beautiful little graphic of these two cars, um, one behind the other. Right. So... Yeah, in so many ways, you know, a lot of these cars, they exist um, to demonstrate the technology that's coming mainstream to the rest of the model line and the cheaper cars. But I think in the XLR, it not only did that, and like I've said a lot about a lot of these novelty cars, the, the new retro Ford Thunderbird, but in addition to doing that, it stands alone as a great car unto itself, regardless of whatever sort of gimmicks were around it. And speaking of gimmicks, I've remembered my train of thought. We were talking about XLR badges. So at least uh, three in the interior, one on the dashboard, the floor mats, and the door <laughs> jam, and then one on the each side of the car, one on the rear. The headlights have XLR insignias in them, um, and I'm sure maybe the taillights do too. So it does not let you forget that you are driving an XLR. And I think that's really, really important because a lot of people would say, oh, this is just a rebadged Corvette. Um, which the cool thing is, I mean, this car was made in Bowling Green, Kentucky at the Corvette factory. Um, and I, Scott says, and I totally believe him, uh, I have no reason to think otherwise, that that was the only other car manufactured at that plant besides the Corvette. So that is truly a mark of distinction. And it's cool because it ties it into the Corvette lineage while still being a, a completely separate entity unto itself. So for many, many reasons, I think the Cadillac XLR is a great car. And we'll climb a hill here in it just to prove it to you. I'm going to turn left here. And then top this up. Unfortunately, this doesn't have an emergency handbrake we can pull to whip around a corner. Look at that. We're up to 21.9 miles a gallon. Somehow, even, well, you must be driving it really aggressively. Oh, janky. I'm Did not around. <laughs> it's that I've variable valve that. timing. Oh my god. Ah, <laughs> uh, fantastic. I have a heavy foot. <laughs> Let's push around a corner here a little bit. Yeah, the steering's actually quite nice. Again, like I said, power assist assisted, but um, plenty of weight to it too. The car feels very planted. I'm sure this is not a light car. We'll try to put the uh, weight figure up for you. 3,900 pounds. 3,900 pounds. So for a 4,000 pound car, it moves extremely well. And uh, still a sports car though somehow. You know, with all these electric cars, they weigh so much anyways, 4,000 pounds suddenly doesn't sound that bad. Um, it gets out of its own way just fine. And um, you know, you can certainly go around a bend and have fun with it too. As we're gonna do right now. Give it hell. You know, it's always a sign, a good sign with a car like this well, you just can't help but do one more pull in it. So you want to just keep giving it another pull, keep giving it another pull, and uh, you know just experience that very addictive feeling of feeling it lock up and kick on and shoot forward. Nothing groundbreaking in terms of you know the speed, no, but no, it's not. It's not a supercar. It, it, 
by any means. It's no. a GT car. It yeah. really is a GT yeah. car. It's, it's a, comfortable. It's a perfect GT car. And the fact that the top goes down is just gravy while you get all the sort of benefits of having a, a hard top coupe. Um, so, boy, really, really excited to drive this Cadillac XLR. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with us for the ride. I hope you've enjoyed my at times incoherent rambling, bumbling, and stumbling. That is how we do things here on Janky AF. We are janky. We celebrate all cars because we believe that all cars are great. This is certainly uh, a great car, a 2004 Cadillac XLR. Thank you again. Janky do thank you so much to Scott for being so generous. He even cooked me lunch today and um, had a great time driving this beast. And uh, we'll have another one again for you soon. So, until then, buckle up and janky do thanky. <laughs> you know how it goes. I know. You gotta do the finger point. Yeah, please, for me, okay.